Today, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau introduced legislation to legalize physician-assisted suicide. It's a deeply personal uh, issue that affects uh, all of Some us. Some believe it is their only option. We are very concerned about the exclusion of individuals um, with mental illness. No one should be faced with such an impossible choice. Deeply personal, deeply divisive. The question of who should be allowed assisted dying has driven up tensions in Canada. Canada first introduced medical assistance in dying or MAID, where medics can help people end their life, in 2016. At the time, it was only open to those whose natural death was reasonably foreseeable, for example, patients with terminal cancer. Five years later, the law was extended to adults who had a serious incurable illness or disability if they were in an advanced state of decline and endured intolerable physical or psychological suffering. It was, however, not open to those with only a mental illness. That restriction was planned to be lifted in March this year, but yesterday the Canadian government put forward a bill to delay it for another year. My name is Roger Foley. There have been long-held concerns about MAID, including the idea pressure would be placed on patients to take up the option. The hospital SSS and nurses were trying to coerce me into an assisted death by threatening to charge me $1,800 per day or force discharge me without the care I need to live. I felt pressured by these staff raising assisted dying rather than relieving my suffering with dignified and compassionate care. For some, this latest change was meant to be about correcting discrimination, arguing mental and physical health should be treated equally. But for others, the delay has brought relief. It seems to me that offering death to people in the moments of greatest vulnerability, fragility, is profoundly uh, unethical. I have a patient, I'm in the middle of treatment, the middle of medication trials, and the family doctor came along and kindly, you know, from her perspective, offered MAID. The patient said, yeah, why don't I just die? It's Proponents argue safeguards have been designed within the law arguing applying for MAID is not the same as thinking about suicide. You have to separate suicidal ideation from wanting to access MAID for a mental condition. We believe the practitioners are very good at, at sorting out suicidal ideation. But it's really important that we get this right, in that I think that a lot of the opposition has been around suicide when it, it is not. However, organisations like the Society of Canadian Psychiatry say it's much more difficult to prove a mental health condition cannot be cured. Access to professional help has also been raised. Wait times for specialist services can be years long. The assessment period for assisted dying, only 90 days. And there's no requirement to have tried every available treatment. So you can get death in three months while you're waiting for treatment for a disease that is treatable and where you could live decades, a very long, good life. I'm telling you bluntly, I'm, I'm one of Canada's experts, and I can't predict who's going to get better. So when I have nurse practitioners and family doctors saying with confidence that they can, I'm not sure what to do with that, other than to respond that that kind of ideological approach is going to lead to people dying who would have gotten better with the right treatment. Even before this latest planned expansion, the number of assisted deaths in Canada has continually risen. In 2021, they made up almost 5% of all deaths in the province of Quebec. In the UK, a new inquiry into assisted dying was launched by the Health and Social Care Committee in December. It includes learning from international experience. What happens in Canada could influence our future plans.